everyone. Um, let me get this adjusted a little bit here for us. Okay. Um, so um, I'm Megan Rigoni. I'm one of the behaviorists here, and I'm going to be um, facilitating today's virtual group for those of you who are tuning in today. If you wouldn't mind, just uh, type in right now and let me know if you can hear me and see me. Um, if you're having any issues, let me know. Okay, can't see me. Oh, start sharing. Whoops. Bear with me. Okay, how about that? Can you see now? All right. Okay, you can see and hear me. Looks like, Kim, are you struggling? Having any trouble? Um, anyone still having issues with seeing me? I will be honest, this is only my second time doing this, so I am learning. Um, okay, Kim, you can only hear me. And are you on your... Um, you're on your cell phone. You're on an iPad. Okay. Is that normal, Josh? I'm getting some consultation from our expert here. Okay. Okay. Hang on just a second. All right, thanks, Kim, for being understanding. Um, we'll try to work through that and see if that might be an issue. Um, but, um, okay, thanks, Josh. All right, so um, welcome today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, several of you have um, probably done this before, but if you have any questions, um, we are a recording group today, but we do anonymize uh, your name. So please feel free um, to participate by uh, typing in and responding when I ask questions. Um, you know, no one is forced to um, respond, but it's very helpful for us to have the input and still get to interact with each other. Um, anybody have any questions before we get started? Okay. Um, and I will respond, okay, thanks, Stu. Um, I will respond by speaking to you. Um, uh, rather than typing if you have any questions. Um, so today we're talking about building social support. Um, so why can't I just do this on my own, right? I mean, I signed up for this program on my own, um, or though some of you may have signed up with family members or, or coworkers. Um, but oftentimes when I'm meeting with patients in behaviorist visits, um, they'll share with me trepidation or concern that um, they're not ready or don't know how to talk to others about this journey that they're on. Um, and oftentimes people will, um, will hide this, will want to not talk about it with people in their life. Um, any of you here, if you're comfortable, um, want to share with me any reasons why you may not want to share this with people, why you might have been concerned or taken pause before you shared your weight loss journey. Um, wait just a minute. Um, some things that I'll often hear people say, um, that it, it puts pressure on you, right? If, if I tell people I'm doing this, they're going to be watching me. Um, okay, good. You guys are proud to tell people. Awesome. So, um, so you can help me teach this class. Um, uh, but so, as Stu says, it's a common thing. Most people have done it. So that's kind of a, a good thing about social support, right? A lot of people can normalize for you. Oh, well, you know, I've tried to lose weight before, too. And you may find that people ask a lot of questions that are inspired by you. But I think that there is the other side to that. Some people are very uncomfortable being under the microscope. And perhaps sharing this um, does add to the accountability. Others are going to be watching me. Um, maybe it's something that you've lost weight in the past and you're not sure you want to share it again because you regained it and there's sort of a sense of superstition or fear that that will, um, will happen again and that you'll disappoint yourself or disappoint others. Um, 
uh, a desire for privacy. I have a lot of people say, well, it's not their business. Okay, you know. Um, or it, just an embarrassment, um, fear of failure. Um, I think all of those are valid concerns. Um, uh, one of you says, I feel like so many of my friends lost weight just through exercise, but I couldn't. So people might look at the liquid diet as an easy way out. Yeah, you know, there are. Some people are inspired and positive, and others just justify off-plan foods instead of supporting at a time of struggle. Yeah, you're right. Um, in this journey, you may find that other people in your life influence um, your weight loss, their perspectives, the things that they say to you about this process. So it's frightening, right, to, to reach out and let others know that you're doing this at times. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the, pro, the pros of social support. And I think you'll find, although these things um, can um, certainly impact your weight loss journey. We're going to talk a little bit about um, asserting yourself today and talking to your uh, support system about how they can support you, um, about things they can say and do, um, because a lot of times people, they don't know how to support you. They don't know whether they're supposed to be monitoring you or turning their uh, turning the other cheek when you eat something off plan. So we'll talk about that a little bit today in terms of building healthy social support um, and managing those people that are healthy and how to um, sort of deter them. So, um, so yes, um, all of those are valid points, good points. Thanks for sharing. Um, so even though we might be reluctant, we have science on our side telling us that there are proven benefits to social support, um, particularly in terms of, of weight loss, but also just in general. People who have a strong support system and feel supported, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean quantity, right? The amount of people, but quality. So quality support system equates to less stress, fewer physical illness, and a greater sense of success, that you're able to share this with others. It's not just something you're doing on your own. Um, so we want to encourage you guys to build your support network and to really think outside the box. It's not just the people that live in the home with you or the people that eat with you at lunch. Um, it's your family, your friends, any groups that you're in. Um, maybe you're a part of a, a volunteer group, a mom's group, um, maybe even like a boot camp, things like that. Um, networks that you might be in. Um, maybe you're part of a work network. Um, definitely, you know, any spouse or significant other that you have. You know, your, your faith uh, leader, people in your church, and also your coworkers. You know, oftentimes you're spending more time with your coworkers than you are with your friends or potentially your family. So you may want to think about a few trusted people at work and then in these other environments that you may want to share this with. Or maybe you share it with everyone. Um, so how do I build my network? Um, so if you're looking at this thinking, you know, yeah, I've told a few people, but, you know, it might really help for me to reach out and to get better about eliciting support, right? Because it's not just about saying, you know, hey, well, you know, I'm doing this. It's about telling others how they can um, best be a support to you. No one is a mind reader. We all try to do it, um, but we have to be very explicit about what we need from others in terms of support. Um, so first, um, you want to state your intention to achieve a healthy weight, right? So um, someone mentioned earlier that people may have judgments about doing a liquid diet or about doing a program like this. People are going to come into it with um, sort of their own perceptions of weight loss. Um, so it's important that you start out sort of knowing and saying, I'm, I'm coming into this because I want to lose weight to be healthier, right? Or, you know, to be able to get the surgery that I want, or whatever your intention is, so that you're sort of prepared. Um, I said, prepare your elevator speech. Um, you know, again, people are going to ask the question, so it's really good to just practice what you're going to say. You know, and you may have different speeches depending on the comfort level that you have with that person, right? So there's the speech that I give at work, like, you know, yes, I'm on a weight management program. 
and I'm doing this because I want to improve my mobility and longevity of life. And then there's this feel that you might give your friends, like, oh, I'm doing this, and this is really hard, and um, you know, you might be a little bit more forthcoming. But go ahead and anticipate that conversation and tie it in to your health because that's what this is really about. Um, so uh, tell others what you need. Um, so be explicit. Uh, I need fewer sweets in the house. Um, if you're going to make those cookies, please take them to work. Um, I need words of encouragement. I need you to go walking with me. Give tangible ideas of how the people around you can support you. Um, set limits on any behaviors or situations that threaten to sabotage your weight loss efforts. So if you have identified that there are certain people that, um, you know, maybe they, there's a group at work that goes out to lunch every day and they come in and they always ask you if you want to order in. Um, maybe you go ahead and say, you know what, um, I really appreciate you guys trying to include me, but why don't, you know, next time you don't need to ask me, but if you guys choose to go, um, you know, to blank restaurant, then let me know because I, I can get something there that, you know, will fit into my plan. Um, and avoid negativity. You know, if there are people um, that have made negative statements to you, um, have said this is an easy way out, you may know that that's really not the person. You might still be able to reach out to that person about, you know, your struggles with your children or about something else in your life, but that may not be the person that you want to include in this process. Um, you may want to avoid that negativity. Um, so if it's somebody you can't avoid, because there might be people like that, um, then you want to set clear limits on your interactions with those people. So if you have a loved one in your home who um, maybe they say, oh, you know, I don't think you need to lose weight, or I really miss us having hamburgers together. Um, you really want to set clear limits with that person. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later because there are some tricky situations um, that you may have to um, sort through in this journey. Um, give constructive feedback. Uh, oftentimes, um, when others um, are not attuned to our needs or are not supporting us in the way that we want or need, we become angry. Um, and then we may become blaming or accusatory. And what I mean by that are you statements. You always bring that food into the house and you're making me fail. Um, you never go on a walk with me. Um, and when we approach people with those types of you statements or blaming accusations, we automatically put them in a defensive posture. I think about it like two porcupines, right? If one puts up their quills with accusations, the other person is also going to put up their quills. And so you're less likely to have a productive conversation and get your needs met. So you really want to think about giving constructive feedback. So one thing that's really helpful with that is coming in saying, you know, an I statement. You know, I feel really unsupported when you choose to sleep in on Saturday morning rather than going on the walk that we promised we would go on. Um, I know this is really hard for you, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to discuss these types of topics later, but be sure to approach it from a constructive place, not a destructive place. Um, tell others to applaud your successes. Um, oftentimes that's a really easy way to just say out loud, you know, um, tell me when I'm doing well, give me positive feedback, but if I grab the bread um, at the table and slather butter on it, you know, don't slap my hand or, you know, remind me, um, unless that person is sort of your accountability buddy. Um, but oftentimes that can set you up to feel watched or monitored, and then at times you can rebel against that. So you really want to get good about knowing, and you may tell someone up front that you want them to do that, and then when they you know, kind of jab you when you order that thing on the menu, you find that that hurt your feelings or you didn't like that, continue to give them feedback about that. And don't take it personal. Often others um, are responding to your weight loss journey because it brings something up for them about their own body or their own relationship with food. So it's really helpful to take a step back and think about how 
um, how this person's reaction may be more about them than about you. Um, um, so some people might, you know, I'm losing my eating buddy. You know, I used to have this friend that we would, you know, sit around and eat cookie dough and watch movies together, and now they're trying to lose weight, and I'm mourning the loss of that friendship. Um, has anybody else had um, a person in their life that during this weight loss journey has been less than supportive um, and it's perhaps more about that other person's own journey? Um, feel free to share if, you, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. So having friends that um, don't understand that you turn down that glass of wine or that margarita when you guys go out to dinner, um, being made to feel guilty because you've changed the routine. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think um, we as a society, we socialize through food and drink. And so you're changing the rules. Um, I think of any relationship like puzzle pieces, right? They fit together in a certain way. And you are making this decision, this awesome life-changing decision to change your puzzle piece, right? You're, you're not, you're different. And so you may not be fitting together with other people in your life quite the same way that you did before. And that doesn't mean that you can't still keep these friendships and relationships. It just means being really open and honest with them about why you're doing this, that you're not doing this because you know you want to make them angry or not participate or because you look down upon your friends who are having the margarita or who still want to sleep in on Saturday morning, but that because you're changing, that may require some change on their part as well. And, um, and it's important to acknowledge to them that your change in routine is affecting them and to talk about it um, but yeah it's it's a difficult topic um, okay um, one thing that you can really do is you know your friends who uh, you know typically you guys are getting together for a wine night a beer um, or maybe you guys are typically you know go into a movie on Friday night um, you might want to team up with some of your friends who have a similar goal, who want to lose weight or want to, you know, run a marathon or this or that, and really sort of invest a little bit more time in those relationships right now. And then the other relationships, you might want to offer alternatives in terms of, um, you know, instead of going out for a drink, could we go for a walk? Could we do this or that? Okay. So don't forget about the resources that are right in front of you. You know, I'm talking here about a lot of difficult conversations, but there are some relationships that, you know, this is right in front of you. So pick up that support, um, particularly from us here. Um, you know, let us know about these conversations. We can role play it, um, especially in behaviorist visits. I love to role play. Let's have this conversation. Let's practice what you might say to someone else. You can bring a family member um, or close friend into a behaviorist visit with you, and we can talk about it in there. Um, attend these groups and reach out to each other, right? You're, um, one thing that I think Stu or someone said early on is that a lot of people have been through this before, um, and particularly in this group. So if you can connect with people here, they can say, oh, you're right, that's happened to me, and here's how I handled it. Um, find a weight loss role model. You know, maybe it's somebody in the program, um, maybe it's somebody at work, and pick their brain. Go to lunch with them. Go for a walk with them. Find out what keeps them motivated. Um, and be your own support system by creating um, a, sort of some rewards for yourself, right? So food's a really strong reward system, right? I mean, I know that since I was a little girl, right, I've been getting, you know, a, a sucker at the doctor's office, um, you know, a donut after, um, you know, the dentist, whatever it is. We, we have rewarded ourselves with food all our lives, perhaps. So now is time to start supporting yourself and rewarding yourself with things that don't involve food. So um, listening to your favorite music when you exercise, 
uh, you know, get on some blogs, weight loss blogs, um, read inspirational stories. Um, we have a, a list of books that we can give you. There are lots of great books out there um, that can inspire you in this journey. Um, do things like uh, making your desk a, a nice, enjoyable place to be. Fix up your house. Um, create a vision board to keep yourself invested in this process. And um, sometimes it's just about phrasing this for yourself. I had a patient who once came to me proudly and said, you know, I walked by that haagen dazs place in the mall and I thought, oh, I really want to treat myself with a chocolate-covered strawberry. But she was able to change that thought and to say to herself, you know what? I'm going to treat myself by walking right by this store and not stopping. Sometimes it's about the words that we use in our head. Being able to say to ourselves, I'm actually treating myself by saying no to this because I'm preventing myself from feeling the guilt and misery that I would feel after I ate it. Um, so sometimes this is a, a game that we play um, with ourselves and our minds. Um, so it's really important with your support system to sort of constantly be aware of whether your friends, family members, other people around you are supporting you or are sabotaging you. Um, and that kind of comes into play when you have friends, family members, coworkers who, um, I love this uh, uh, cartoon here, um, who sort of justify off-plan behaviors. Um, so uh, this cookie is, is talking to this woman, right, saying, um, come on, it doesn't matter anymore. One of me is essentially the same as a hun hundred. Um, and, and there are all these voices and, and sort of people in your life, right? Those friends out to dinner who are all having that glass of wine or ordering that burger that are sort of kind of sabotaging your efforts. Has anyone experienced a situation like this where someone in their support system actually became part of, a, I guess, a saboteur? someone who's sabotaging their journey. Um, I think it's, it's just important to keep in mind. Um, one thing that I, I put here was um, having a phrase to say to others, please don't love me with food. Um, you know, you may have a, a family member, um, loved one that tends to bring you food when you're feeling down. Um, so you may want to offer suggestions about other things that they can um, bring to you. Um, know when to take a break from an unhealthy relationship. Um, you know, it's important to know that this may be a time where some of your friendships um, are ones that you're going to invest more in, and some of them you're going to invest less in. Um, and some of them are just going to need to change in dynamics. Um, so again, you know, if this is a really important relationship to you, then you may want to talk about having some counseling or coming in and talking about how your changes might be affecting that person and how you guys can come up with some compromise. Because it is important to um, validate for that person that this might also be hard for them. Um, so how do I tell others what I need? Um, again, no one else, it's no one else's job to know how to support us. Um, it, even here at the clinic, we may not know that you're frustrated unless you tell us. Um, so it's really important that you get good at offering feedback, constructive feedback, about how others can support you. So you may want to sit down and think about what's worked for you in the past. Um, has it been helpful in the past to have um, a friend who um, eats with you, um, who eats healthy meals? Has it been important for you to eat alone, to stay away from those individuals? Um, what hasn't worked in the past? Um, maybe you know that in the past it was really a trigger point for you when your spouse um, would sort of make judgmental comments about you eating off plan. Um, so do sort of a self-assessment. Um, and remember that it's not going to be the same for each and every person. You may need this type of support from your spouse and this type of support from your coworkers, and that's okay. Um, it's just important to have those conversations. Um, 
consider uh, breaking down your support system into some different types of support. So a listening supporter is going to be someone that you can kind of sit down and they're not going to judge you at any point, even when you say, oh gosh, I just really want that donut and this is so hard. And Someone that's just going to actively listen and be there to validate or affirm how difficult this journey is for you. Um, and But also that's going to be positive. A listening person really is going to be someone not that commiserates with you, but that's able to be positive and praise your efforts and help help you see the good, right? So so that says when you're you know saying, oh this is so hard, that says, but look how far you've come, look how great you're doing, you are so um, happy and you're changing. Um, a challenging supporter is someone who's gonna motivate you um, and encourage you in a more challenging way. Um, so who is gonna maybe be a little more real with you. Maybe you have a friend that's very straightforward. Um, not not mean or judgmental, but that um, is going to help you sort of question um, if you're doing what's best to achieve your goals. So maybe that's someone that you say, you know, I've been trying this, but it's not really working. What do you think? And then they can kind of give you their perspective. Um, you may want to also consider someone who has informational support. So this might be someone here at the clinic, every time you come in for a visit, who has more information than you do about weight loss, nutrition, and all of those factors. That's the kind of person you're going to go to when um, you're feeling this plateau coming, when you're feeling frustrated. Um, and emotional support is someone who's going to be there and stand by you in a difficult situation, um, even if they don't understand your viewpoint. So maybe you've gone through a really stressful week, you've fallen off the wagon, you've been eating some things, and you're feeling very emotional. That might be someone that you want to call on at that time. Um, and again, these might be different people. So maybe you want to create a list of people that you want to turn to it when you're needing these different types of support. Um, Okay, so this is uh, this gives you some ideas of things that you might want to suggest to the people that are on your support list uh, or on your support network list. Um, so again, each person is going to be a little bit different, but these are some suggestions that um, we found can be helpful um, to different people. So um, for some people, you may want to um, ask them to just ignore this process. Um, that you'll reach out to them if you need their input, but that you know on a day-to-day -day basis, you really don't want to be. This might be for someone who does feel that fear of being under the microscope. You know, just say, I really you know don't want to talk about it, and that's okay. Um, praise my successes, ignore my setbacks. Um, this might be a someone that you live with. Um, can you please avoid leaving out snacks in plain sight? Um, this is someone, you know, observe my eating and prompt me when I'm about to slip. So, um, you know, that might be the coworker that goes out to eat with you. Um, offer me what you're having, but don't pressure me. I think that's really important feedback. Um, let's not order dessert when we go out to eat consider becoming my walking partner. Um, tell me when you notice a change in my appearance. I think this is really important because a lot of people will become frustrated when they're not getting feedback on their weight loss. And um, it's important to know that a lot of people are very sensitive about making comments about weight. And so it may not be that others are not noticing. It's that you know, there are a variety of different reasons in our society why people may be losing weight. And if you don't have that rapport with that person, they may not feel comfortable sharing that with you. So it's important to let them know what you need in terms of, hey, I need to hear it. I need to know that I'm working hard. Um, don't try to make me feel guilty when I take time out to exercise or meal prep. Um, and even speaking with your, your workplace, um, that can be an important part of this. Um, this program is a big time commitment. Um, so, you know, you may want to talk to your workplace about um, creating time where you can come to these visits, where you, and that's where it comes into play needing to tell them about this. Um, you know, asking them if you can take time off to, you know, go to the gym midway through the day, things like that. Um, and remember, 
Um, when asking for support, use the golden rule. Um, it's important to keep in mind that um, when you are, like I said earlier, when you're changing, the people around you are also going to have to change in how they interact with you. And while those changes are most likely going to be positive, right, because you're making positive, healthy changes, that's, that can be difficult on a relationship. Um, so when you're asking someone for support, use a neutral tone. Use your I statements. Remember to listen and get feedback from them. They may say, you know, I really can't commit to going on a walk every Saturday morning. Or, you know, it's going to be really hard for me to not eat a hamburger when we go to this restaurant. And then when they um, give their feedback, have empathy for them. Understand, because you struggle with your weight as well, that this can be hard to watch someone across from you make changes that you're not ready to make yourself. Um, and then negotiate or compromise. You know, maybe uh, they're not willing to give up their hamburger, but you say, okay, well, why don't you go out to dinner with your friend that night and we'll go do something together the next day. Um, and remember, just as much as you want them to affirm your success, it's important to offer appreciation to the people in your life that are supporting you. So the people that have made changes that are there, tell them how good that feels. Um, learn how to take a compliment. You know, oftentimes that can be really hard. People are saying positive things about your body and you might be saying, oh no, no big deal. Um, own it. Be excited about it and let them know how good that feels because they're more likely to continue to support you if they're getting that type of positive reinforcement for what they're doing. Um, okay. So I ran through that pretty quickly. Does anybody have any questions um, about this? Ways to elicit more support? Nope. No? Okay. All right. Got someone else typing. All right. So everyone out there today um, is in one of these programs. I want you guys to think of one way in the next week that you can reach out to ask for support, okay? Um, and I want you to challenge yourself um, to um, try something new, reach out to someone new, um, and use some of these techniques, okay? And um, if you uh, want to report back to us in next week's group, we would love to hear about it. So, um, so remember, I'm gonna um, close out the group today, and when I do, it will direct you to a, um, a survey, and if you fill that out, then you will get a perk -up point um, for your attendance today. Um, you are lucky, Stu. I'm really glad that this is an issue for you. Um, thank you guys for being here today, and um, any if you have any other questions, let us know. All right. Thanks.